Hey, before we get to the video, I just wanted to encourage you, hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Also down below, you're going to see a button that says thanks. If you go there, you can help support my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Now onto the video. Hey guys, I wanted to show you a little bit about my electrolysis setup. Now, I am no expert at this. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos that I'm sure you guys are in the process of watching yourself to learn how to do this. Uh, I will say that uh, doing the electrolysis is something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I honestly was kind of intimidated by it. I don't like messing with electricity, uh, but I will say that this is extremely easy a lot easier than I thought. I, I don't need a big setup. Um, I'm just using a small plastic tub just to get started with a couple things just to see if it's gonna work. Um, so I'll just, I'll just show you my small little setup and, uh, and then how uh, I'm gonna preserve uh, a couple pieces with uh, boiling the wax. So again, I'm not the expert. I took a lot of different YouTube videos and kind of used that knowledge to do a small setup. Uh, and then the main thing is trying to do it safely. So uh, yeah, here's what I here's what I did. All right, so this is my first attempt at electrolysis. I just had these little plastic tubs here, or cheap things from Walmart, and I used this. It worked great. This is a paint stirrer that I put a bolt through it so that I could uh, just clip my alligator clip for my negative terminal over here. And it, and it worked really well. I used this for about a week. Um, I did a couple pieces. They turned out really good. Uh, I was surprised at how easy this whole electrolysis thing is. Uh, I'll show you that the battery that I'm, or the battery charger I'm using is just an old one that I had. And luckily it's the right one. Um, you need a manual battery charger, not one of the new automatic ones. If it says automatic, it's not going to work because it can sense that it's not hooked up to a battery and it'll shut off. Those battery tenders that you can get, same thing, they'll shut off. So I know you can get these online, these older ones uh, for pretty cheap. I know on eBay I've seen them, but uh, anyhow, I'm lucky I had the right ones. What I'm doing now is I bought this at Walmart. It's just, it's bigger. It came with a lid, a little bit bigger than that. And I want to set this up so that I have a little bit more room than I did in the beginning. Um, the sacrifice metal, I'll zip tie it to that side. I'll have my negative terminals on this side. And I will show you real quick, the sacrifice metal I used, um, I got this three foot strip right here from Lowe's. Um, and it was, I got this several years ago actually for welding but it wasn't that expensive. I just cut a piece off and used it. And I used this piece for, for about a week and it's just still going strong. But yeah, that's what I'm doing now is I wanna get this thing set up. Give me a little bit more room. I got some more baking soda and I'm ready to go. Okay, so I am going, I filled this up with water, drilled my holes for for to put a zip tie to hold the, uh, sacrifice metal in place. And now I'm just gonna put the rest of what I have of this baking soda in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stir that up. I, I might put a little bit more. I think that's actually the perfect amount. Uh, people weren't, from what I saw, people weren't putting a ton in there. Um, so I think that'll work. I'm gonna stir this up and then I'm gonna get my things hooked up. Hey, just so you don't make the mistake, not really a mistake, it's still going to work, but when I drilled the holes for this, for this sacrifice metal, so that I can put my zip tie right there, I drilled the holes a little too low. So drill them up as high as you can, because now if I get the water too high, now I've just got these two holes that the water's going to flow out of, but not a big deal, but just thought I would mention it because I wish I had put these a little bit higher. Okay, I'm gonna give it a shot here. Uh, I've got an old iron that I found that's in there. I've got two unknown things. I, I, I'm really curious to see what those turn out to be. But the way I got this set up, I stripped some wire. I wrapped the wire all around this iron and I used the clamps to hold it onto it. I don't know that that's gonna work. 
I know the best way is to drill a hole into it and put a screw uh, to hold your lead, but I'm going to give this a shot. I mean, that's what this is all about, trial and error without electrocuting yourself, I guess. So we'll give it a shot. I'm going to flip it on and see how it goes. All right, guys, it's buzzing. It's turned on. I got it on 12 volts, 6 amps. Uh, I can see the water starting to kind of move a little bit, but what you'll see is it'll start bubbling. I'm going to leave this thing alone. If if I come back, I would say in, in an hour, this thing's going to be not, not like boiling. When I say bubbling, you're going to see bubbles coming up and then they'll be like just crud on the top. Uh, as a reminder, don't touch the water. You're going to get yourself zapped. So this is all energized right now. So just be careful. I, I, I am just overly careful when I'm doing this. So, all right, let's, let's let it do its work and come back in a couple hours and see where we're at. All right, so it's been 24 hours. Come in here into my shop. I'm gonna first turn off the uh, charger covered this up last night um, to where it says do not touch got a lot of bubbles the water's pretty dirty so it looks like it's been doing some work so let's check out some of these pieces here first I'm gonna well here disconnected the negative right there okay first thing I don't know this is kind of a mystery item now, when you take these out, what I found is uh, if you see all the rust still kind of clustered on it, it comes off real easy. So what I did is I just got a bucket here with some with some water to where I can, instead of dipping it back in my electrolysis bath, it gets the water all filthy. So, And then if I just kind of break it, a lot of the stuff will break right off. And what I found is, is look, I know that uh, the best way to do this is to drill a hole in there and put a screw. It makes the most, the, the best contact with the metal and it works a lot faster. With this, I, um, what did I do? I put a clamp, like an alligator clip onto it well when you do that you're you're pretty much just clamping onto the rust it still does stuff to it but uh, initially I found that it doesn't work as quick it's looking like it might be the head of a spike that broke off if it was like right there attached to it let me see I got a bunch of metal spikes that I have to clean up just as an example, but let's say, let's say it was this, right? It might end up being that, a spike. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back on it, and now it's gonna make a lot better contact with the metal. So I'll throw that back in. Here's this, I get another piece. Kind of the same deal. Yeah, see stuff is just flaking right off. And I have a feeling that's what this is going to be too, probably the head of an iron spike. And I'm not really doing anything when I'm hitting this. It's just, it's, it's making a lot of the stuff flake off. So that's what I found is when you, when you come back and check on this, it's not like you're going to just have a brand new piece of clean iron sitting there waiting for you. Um, you that was my first thought. First time I did it and I came out and I'm like, ah, oh, it's still encrusted. But then you just tap it a little and that stuff will flake right off. Yeah, see, that's what this is going to be. It looks like the head of a spike where it broke off right there. That's pretty darn old. But I'm going to go ahead and just put it back in the bath. This piece I'm curious about, this was a... Um, like a, an iron disc with a hole in the middle. Uh, it's really old. I wouldn't, I didn't think it was necessarily a washer, 
like a modern washer. I didn't know if it was like a trade coin or a trade token or what. It just didn't look it just didn't look like a like a modern washer, even an old one. The hole in the middle is is super small. Now the big thing is going to be this this iron that I put in. See, I just put the metal direct the wire directly on it and I use these clamps to hold it into place. Yeah, see how it just wipes off this encrusted stuff and I'm seeing that black iron. All right, so I just drilled a hole with a tiny bit, tiny drill bit, and I put this screw in it. So I think this is going to this is going to do really good. I'll hook the the clamp or the wire directly to this and I think this is just going to go really fast. So, so I got it turned back on, I put the lid back on. But I can show you here, you see that iron is right in there. Let's see if I can get a better angle. Anyhow, everything's in there. It's connected to my ground, but it's just uh, throwing off a bunch of bubbles. So if you see bubbles, if you see movement, like little tiny bubbles coming off of your relics, then you know, you know it's working. But again, the best connection, the better the connection you have to your to your relic, your piece of iron, the, the quicker this is going to go. I also got this at Walmart. It's like a, a stock pot. I think this one was only like 12 or 13, I think 12.88 is what it was. It was super cheap. Got a thermometer. Uh, what I'm doing is after I do the electrolysis on the iron, I'm going to boil them in paraffin wax to seal them. Um, that's I've I've read and I've already experienced that that's really important to do because these things will flash rust. Um, so this is a, a artillery shell, part of an artillery shell that I did. This thing was totally encrusted, and the the electrolysis did super. Uh, good work on it, but I took it out. I didn't seal it with the wax and pretty quickly I would say within a day as it dried out um, You could see that it's getting rust on it So I'm gonna have to put this back in the electrolysis for probably a couple hours uh, Clean it up all the rust is gone and then I'll put it in the paraffin boil it in this paraffin wax same thing with this piece of, uh, of shell shell fragment uh, everything cleaned up real nice, but then it just started to rust right, right away. The wax that I got at Walmart, this Gulf wax, it's for uh, candle making, canning. This is a pound, and I think it was like three sixty-seven a pound. But uh, I got two pounds of this, and I got two pounds that I seriously overpaid for on Amazon. Um, so I've got a total of four pounds that I'm going to be able to use and melt down in this pot and put my relics in there. So I'm super excited to do this. All of this I've, I've gotten from reading and from watching videos. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to give this thing a shot. So far, my first attempt at it, much easier than I thought it was going to, to be. So now let's get this other stuff scored away. Show you real quick, this is the setup for the, for the, the, the wax to boil my relics when I'm done. So I'm just using a little camp stove that I have. It's a, just a little butane thing I got at Walmart. Um, right now I've already done a bunch of the relics, but if you look inside here, you'll see this is all the wax that's dried. Um, it, it melts down pretty quick. And right here, I was trying to maintain the temperature so it's not getting over uh, like the flash point for this is somewhere around 400 degrees. So I was making sure it wasn't that. Here's something that's ready to go in. Uh, here's some stuff that's already done. It's pretty cool. Like it, that wax just preserves it. It just buffed it up a little when I was done. But yeah, that's what I did. Boiled it, put everything in there until uh, all the bubbles kind of dissipated. 
and then I just, with the tongs, I just set it down here overnight, came back to it the next day, kind of buffed everything up. So that's simple. Hey guys, so let's wrap up the uh, electrolysis and what I discovered. And again, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I've read on this, I've researched online before I tried it. I didn't want to electrocute myself, so I've always kind of uh, put off this attempt. I will say to sum it up that I wish I had done this sooner. It's extremely easy. Um, just, just be careful, obviously. Don't be dipping your hand in the water when you've got the, the, the current going through it, the electricity. It worked great. Um, a couple of things that I had to figure out the hard way is when your sacrifice metal, which is you've got your positive terminal to your sacrifice metal and the negative terminal goes to your your iron that you're trying to clean and it and it like draws the rust and everything to the elect the uh, sacrifice metal what i found is you have to keep that clean so you can turn that on and but once your sacrifice metal after uh, let's say if i did it overnight um, and then i would shut everything off and i would check the progress and i'd brush whatever off and wanted to put it back in the bath. That's also a time to clean off that sacrifice metal because it gets uh, encrusted and eaten up with all of the rust. So if, which I didn't, if you just throw it back in and turn it back on, it's not gonna work. And if it does work, it's gonna work extremely slow to the point where it's just not gonna work anymore. Um, so I had to learn that the hard way. So clean that sacrifice metal. I just used little sheets of little pieces of, of steel that I had. Um, but as I went, I got the grinder out. Um, you can just throw another piece of metal in there and it works fine. But for me, I just grabbed a grinder, cleaned up the metal, threw it back in and it works awesome. So that's one thing. Watch your sacrifice metal. If it's something you're going to continually put a lot of iron uh, relics in, which I've been doing rotating a lot of the stuff through to clean up. Um, and then when I boiled everything with the paraffin wax, I got my wax online. I got some of it at, uh, at Walmart. I ended up getting that stock pot at Walmart for about 13 bucks. When I filled that thing up, I think I ended up having six pounds of paraffin wax. When you buy it at Walmart, I think it comes in one or two pounds. I, I can't remember, but anyhow, I got about six pounds and it was a perfect uh, amount of wax. I didn't obviously want it boiling over, but in putting things in and out um, and not wanting to splash the wax, that was perfect for me. Um, the wax boils quickly. I was also curious about that. So um, yeah, it's awesome. I came back the next day after the paraffin wax and just took a, a, a brush, kind of a stiff bristled, plastic bristled um, brush and just kind of buffed the pieces up and it shines them up and, and they look awesome. So yeah, I've got a bunch of different things that I did. I'll post pictures of it here. Um, that iron came out beautiful. Um, I'm just excited because I've always had this big pile of iron that I found, number one, not knowing exactly what it is, and number two, just, you know, what are you gonna do with it? It's gonna continue to rust. Most of it's just encrusted. So I'm excited to do this electrolysis going forward now. I wish I had done it sooner. Good luck to you. It's a piece of cake, just be careful. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope it, it gives you some pointers and helps you a little bit uh, as you clean up your pile of, of uh, rusty things. Hey.